Hi there! In this video, we will set up Google Analytics for e-commerce tracking on your Shopify store using Shopify's official native GA4 integration. For those who have done it before, we will also do a quick troubleshooting and validation so that we make sure your tracking works properly. This is Erman, co-creator of Analyzify. We have completed over 2000 Shopify GA4 integrations and more than 10,000 merchants use our open source solutions for Shopify Google Tag Manager and Shopify Google Analytics for integrations. We love sharing our experience and knowledge with the Shopify community. We have created many actionable and comprehensive courses here on YouTube. Today it will be a quick one, so without further ado, let's get started. I'm sure some of you has already tried to set it up using some different integration methods. Maybe you used our Shopify GA4 kit or our application or uh, some code blocks that you found around. Um, so if you already have a GA4 installation on your Shopify store, no matter if it works properly or not, then you need to clean that up first. Uh, if you want to use the native integration, obviously. To do so, uh, we just need to go ahead and find a couple codes around. Um, mainly, uh, we just need to go edit code here. And usually within the team liquid, you might see a code block that includes your Google Analytics for measurement ID. And as you can see here, this is hard coded scripted here. I'll just remove this. That's number one step. It doesn't need to be in the theme liquid. Maybe it's a snippet and it's under snippets. So it's hard to know where exactly it is, but more often than not, it is in theme liquid. Um, another place that we want to look is the um, checkout scripts. If you go to your store's checkout section, here you will see some section called additional scripts. Be very careful here. Maybe you have something here which matters, which is working at the moment, but only look for the ones that includes your Google Analytics for tracking ID. So then you can make sure that this is doing the same job as the native integration will do. So now for the sake of this example, I will also delete this script. Make sure not to delete more or less. And if you have any developer or agency you, who you work with, you can consult about this. For now, I'll just delete this option. If you are using Google Tag Manager, which might be through our Shopify GA4 kit, our open source solution, then you might want to go to Google Tag Manager and pause those tags, pause those GA4 tags so that it will not conflict with the native integration. One last possibility, if you are using an app for uh, Shopify GA4 integration, and if you are happy with that, you should stick to that because native GA4 integration doesn't cover all the events and parameters. I have another video which compares native GA4 integration with Analyzify, for example. I will link it somewhere around here. So before you make a decision here, make sure to understand the differences between the native integration and the integration method that you use. Native integration is great. It includes many major e-com events and parameters, but not all. So now we did the cleanup. We can go into the setup section and start setting up GA4 through the Shopify native GA4 integration. To continue with me on this tutorial, obviously we need a Shopify store and you need to be the admin of the Shopify store. Then you also need a Google Analytics for account. If you don't have a Google Analytics for property at the moment, I have another video. You can follow that one to create. I will leave a link around. Uh, so now I assume that you have the GA4 property and now we are on your Shopify admin. Uh, if you click on the left hand side online store and then preferences, this was the place where we used to manage our old analytics, like universal analytics integration. Um, so it doesn't exist anymore. The, the field is still here, but probably this will be gone soon. So now we need the Google channel app. You might already have it if you are connected with Google Merchant Center. So if you don't have it, you need to install it. In my case, I don't have it. So I just click that link and the installation uh, option comes, Google and YouTube. If you don't uh, find that option there, maybe you could just say Google YouTube Shopify app, and then uh, the app store will come with the relevant app, and then you will click add app here. Now this will install a Google sales channel on our store. And if you already have it, um, you don't need to do this step, obviously. You can just uh, follow me in the next step. Uh, in which we will just connect uh, GA4 property with your Shopify store. Now my Google account is not connected because this is a brand new store. Here I'll just choose connect account. 
choose the Google account that holds your Google Analytics property. Um, you might have a couple different Gmail or Google accounts and Google Analytics account might be in another one. So make sure about it. Uh, you choose the correct one here. Once you allow Google Sales Channel uh, to reach your account, then here the options will come in. Uh, I will not do this for now because this is mostly for advertising purposes. This will connect the Merchant Center um, with the Shopify store. I'll skip that because my only goal here is setting up Google Analytics 4. Here I'll just click get started and that will list the properties under my Google Analytics account and you will also see the names here. So this is the correct one. When I choose it and hit connect, it's actually done. It's pretty straightforward. It's quite easy. So now the data from my store should be going to this Google Analytics 4 property. But of course, we will not trust that. We will test, we need to test, and we need to make sure that the data is going forward. So the integration has been completed, at least supposed to be completed. Now we will do the validation. The simplest, the easiest way to do validation is obviously visiting your store and then also opening um, GA Force real-time report in the same time. You ideally should be seeing yourself as a user. And of course, if you have other visitors at the me in the meantime in your store, you will also be seeing them. Uh, but we will do a little bit more of a professional approach. Uh, we will check the events and parameters also. Uh, for that, I like this plugin called Google Chrome extension called Google Analytics Debugger. This is an official Google uh, extension. So if you just search Google Analytics Debugger, then the first result will be obviously that. Then you simply need to add it into your Chrome as an extension. Uh, then you simply need to enable it uh, from your Chrome extensions. Once you enable it here, you will see it. It looks like a little bit like an envelope. Uh, it's like it has a white icon, so it's there. Um, when you go to your store and click that on, now the debug process in the backend has been started. How we will view it? We will view it by going to Google Analytics 4 admin and then here um, debug view it might take some time to be visible here sometimes even a minute uh, but eventually if you activated uh, your google analytics debugger and visited your store just make sure to visit a couple of pages then go to debug view back you will see here your device you can choose your device and the events the ga4 events should be visible here why I like here because we can see the events one by one, the parameters that are attached to events. So it's pretty powerful. Um, let's just go and uh, click this product, click add to cart, go back. Not only with the integration, but also the events take some time to appear here. As, I, as you see here, the add to cart event is here. If I can click to that, I can see the currency, page type, product ID, product value, items, and here I can actually verify if it was uh, done correctly, properly or not, if the integration works properly. Um, if you had the double tracking issues, then now here the add to cart event would have been triggered twice. So that's not the case, which is good. Um, you could continue doing this validation by completing a purchase and then checking if the purchase uh, is visible in the GA4 screen. Uh, but now, as you can see here, everything seems to be working properly. Um, one thing to be careful with always is the double tracking issue. Um, if you use two different integrations methods, then they will overlap with each other. If you want to use two different integration methods for some reason, then use different GA4 properties. So use property number one for the uh, native GA4 integration and use property number two for the other integration that you use. Um, so this could be something uh, which you should be doing in case you want to use multiple integrations in the same time. Otherwise, you will make one sales and then the, in the GA4 reports, you will see multiple sales. That's all from the Shopify GA4 integration, but this topic is quite deep. That's why we have created a complete course on Shopify GA4. In this course, we do an in-depth overview of the GA4 and Shopify integration, integration methods, a detailed troubleshooting. And we also do the migration from Universal Analytics to GA4, troubleshooting one by one every all events using different tools, um, some GA4 settings uh, on your store that you should be doing on Google Analytics 4 so that the GA4 will collect proper data with the correct settings. And the most importantly, GA4 e-commerce reports. What will you do with this integration? Obviously, you need to use the reports. 
you need to take advantage of this integration and this data. So make sure to check out that course. It's completely free here on YouTube. Uh, I hope it, it will be useful for you. Thank you so much for watching us until now and see you in another video.